ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम वी रवि कुमार द हेडलाइंस लास्ट राइट्स ऑफ वेटरन कांग्रेस लीडर एंड फॉर्मर डेली चीफ मिनिस्टर शीला दीक्षित टू बी परफॉर्म टूडे विद फुल स्टेट ऑनर्स 20,000 वेलनेस सेंटर्स टू बी कंप्लीटेड दिस ईयर अंडर द आयुष्मान भारत प्रोग्राम efforts on for early release and repatriation of indian nationals on board british oil tanker seized by iranian authorities says mea and in sports hima das wins gold in the 400 meters race at novo mesto in czech republic taking her gold tally to 5 this month in badminton pv sindhu to meet japan's akane yamaguchi in the women singles final of indonesia open in jakarta Last rites of veteran Congress leader and former Delhi Chief Minister Sheila Dixit will be performed this afternoon at the Nigam Bodh Ghat. She will be accorded a state funeral. 81-year-old Dixit passed away yesterday at a private hospital in the national capital after suffering a cardiac arrest. The three-time Delhi Chief Minister is credited with giving the national capital its modern look. A report from our correspondent. After her death yesterday, Sheila Dixit's body was kept at her residence in the city, where politicians cutting across party lines, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the UPA chairperson Sonia Gandhi, visited to pay their last respects. Delhi government has declared a two-day mourning in the national capital as a mark of respect for the former chief minister. Condolences poured in from various quarters after her demise with President Ramnath Kovind and the Prime Minister recalling the momentous transformation of the national capital during her tenure. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu termed her a good administrator. Known as a warm and affable politician, Dixit carried out massive infrastructure development of Delhi during her tenure. With Dibakar, Aarti Rana, AIA News, Delhi. 20,000 wellness centers will be completed by the end of the current year under the Ayushman Bharat program. This was stated by the Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Harshvardhan in Hyderabad yesterday. He said that a total of 1.5 lakh wellness centers are to be established in the country under this program. Addressing scientists and officials of CSIR laboratories, Dr. Harshvardhan termed the Ayushman Bharat program as a successful model in implementing universal health. he asked them to work in a proactive and out of the box manner to reduce the suffering of people especially those with rare and genetic diseases the minister further said the government has set a target of eradicating tuberculosis from the country by 2025 he also said that the new national medical council bill will be introduced in parliament on monday india's lander mission to moon chandrayaan 2 is all set to take off tomorrow afternoon at 2:43 pm from satish dhawan space center shri hari kota The countdown for the mission is expected to begin this evening. Initially it will be carried in an earth-centric elliptical orbit by the rocket GSLV Mark 3. From there it will be made to escape out of the earth's gravity by burning the engines on board Chandrayaan 2. Later it will be taken on a lunar trajectory and inserted into a 100 km circular orbit around the moon. It will be followed by the descending of the lander in slow motion on the lunar surface and the rover's scientific expedition on its terrain. Originally it was scheduled to lift off early in the morning on July 15th. However, an anomaly in the cryogenic upper stage of the launch vehicle had been detected less than an hour before its ignition and the mission was aborted temporarily. A report from our correspondent. The Indian Space Research Organization ISRO bounces back from the initial setback it faced last Monday. Though the rocket GSLV Mark 3 developed a hitch The integrity of the mission remained intact giving confidence for the national space agency to go for the launch of Chandrayaan 2 in the prevailing launch window itself if the mission is delayed further then the waiting time for the next launch would be longer till September ISRO scientists are said to have tweaked the path and flight duration of Chandrayaan 2 in such a way that the original date with the moon is not missed Jay Singh AR News Chennai Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Singh Puri has said his ministry will not tolerate any compromise on air safety and standards. Mr Puri was speaking at the International Conference Come Awards on Civil Aviation and Cargo in Delhi. The minister said the Indian aviation sector is witnessing rapidly increasing demand. He said that by 2040 air passenger traffic would increase nearly 5 times. He called on industry operators and all stakeholders in the civil aviation sector to work in a healthy perspective. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in the country and abroad in his Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio on the 28th of this month at 11 a.m. Our correspondent reports the Prime Minister has been raising various important issues through the monthly program which is aired on the last Sunday of every month. 
In the last episode of the program, he had highlighted the importance of books. He urged people to make reading a part of daily routine. The Prime Minister mentioned the Akshara Library in Kerala, which lies in a village nestled within the dense forests of Iduki and is a beacon guiding tribal children on a new path. My first country, my first country, was that we could give the flowers in the flowers of the flowers. There were many people who were giving the flowers. I was reading about Kerala's Akshara Library. You will be able to know that the library is in the village of Iduki in the village of Iduki. There are many people who are living in the village of Iduki. There are many people who are living in the village of Iduki. There are many people who are living in the village of Iduki. There are many people who are living एक समय ऐसा भी रहा जब गट्ठर में भरकर और पीठ पर लाद कर यहाँ पुस्तकें लाई गई आज ये लाइब्रेरी आदिवासी बच्चों के साथ हर किसी को एक नई राह दिखा रही दिस इज ऑल इंडिया रेडियो गिविंग यू द न्यूज फॉर क्विक न्यूज अपडेट फॉलो अस ऑन ट्विटर और ट्विटर हैंडल इज एच न्यू या न्यूज ए आर न्यूज अलर्ट Eighteen Indian crew members are reported to be among 23 people on board ship Stena Impero seized by Iranian Revolutionary Guard from the Strait of Hormuz. New Delhi says it is ascertaining further details regarding the detention of Indian crew members. External Affairs Ministry spokesman Ravish Kumar said Indian mission is in touch with the government of Iran to secure the early release and repatriation of Indian nationals. Meanwhile, Britain's Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt yesterday demanded the release of the ship. Hunt said his government wants to de-escalate tensions with Iran. The statement came following a meeting of the emergency committee over Iran's seizure of the British flag tanker. Hunt further said that the seizure of the ship was in contravention of international law. It raises serious questions about the security of British ships. British Airways has cancelled all flights to the Egyptian capital Cairo for a week as a security precaution. Passengers about to board a British Airways flight to Cairo from London's Heathrow Airport were told that it was cancelled and that there would be no alternative flights for a week. The airline did not specify what the security issue was. A spokesman for Cairo Airport told news reporters that the airport was yet to be notified by the airlines of such changes. German Airlines Lufthansa also cancelled flights to Cairo yesterday. However, it would be resumed today. Israeli forces have dispersed several dozen Palestinians protesting the planned demolition of homes in an East Jerusalem village. About 50 Palestinians gathered yesterday at Sur Bahar in solidarity with the owners of homes close to the border wall. According to witnesses, Israeli forces fired tear gas and stun grenades to end the rally. Israel said that the 10 buildings located on the West Bank side of the barrier were erected too close to the structure. In June, Israel's Supreme Court rejected a petition by the residents to cancel the demolitions. UN officials have urged Israel to halt the demolitions. Back home, Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath is scheduled to visit Sonbhadra today to meet family members of the victims of the firing incident which claimed 10 lives on the 17th of this month. A correspondent reports that after meeting the family members of the victims in Umbha village of Ghoravul Tehsil, Chief Minister will go to District Hospital Sonbhadra where he will meet villagers injured in this incident. Later, he will also address a press conference at the collectorate. As southwest monsoon intensifies, heavy rains continue to lash Kerala. The state has been witnessing incessant rain for the last four days. More from our correspondent. Southwest monsoon dredged most part of the state, flooding low-lying areas. Coastal regions are on high alert due to massive sea erosion. Search operations are on for missing four people, including three fishermen. Shutters of major dams are raised. Med department predicts heavy rainfall till 24 July. A red alert is issued in Iduki and Kasako district today. Fishermen are warned not to venture into the sea. Ten relief camps are opened across the state. Mayusha for AR News, Tiruvannadapuram. Government has started a special campaign for water conservation. In this series, All India Radio brings you a special story on Madaka, which was one of the most common traditional systems of water conservation followed in coastal Karnataka. In this system, a large body of water is collected on the sloppy terrain where there is a huge catchment, natural boundaries were created to hold water. More from our Bengaluru correspondent. A yeah, Madaka is a multi-purpose water body that met all the needs of the local village from the cultivation of paddy to domestic purposes. These were traditionally responsible for recharging the underground water source, standing as insurance during water shortage. Sri Badri is an eminent rainwater harvesting exponent from Kasargod who says that Madakas are forgotten water treasures in the laterite areas of coastal Karnataka. The history says that the Madakas were constructed to supplement water irrigation for paddy fields. Madakas 
reservoirs are really water treasures they will help the sustainable water system for irrigation and drinking sri patre says that if this happens madakas will move out from the pages of history and become a part of our life once again r murthy ar news bengaluru Union Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship and the Uttar Pradesh government have decided to set up skill centers of excellence in Greater Noida and Varanasi. The two centers will have latest infrastructure which will be created under joint collaboration between the state and the center. The center was conceptualized by Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself during his visit to Singapore's Institute of Technical Education and its foundation was also laid by him. The institute will be opened in partnership with the Institute of Technical Education Singapore and will have around 10 to 12 labs. In badminton PV Sindhu will meet Japan's Akane Yamaguchi in the women's singles final of Indonesia Open in Jakarta today. This is the first time in her career that Sindhu has made it to Indonesia Open final. In the semi-final yesterday, Sindhu outclassed Chan Yu Fei of China in just 46 minutes. This is Sindhu's fifth win over Chan Yu Fei in eight meetings so far. Meanwhile, Sindhu enjoys a dominant head-to-head record against the finalist Yamaguchi. Indian sprinter Hima Das won a gold medal in the 400 meters race with a season best time of 52.09 seconds at Nove Mesto in Czech Republic yesterday. It was Hima's fifth gold medal since July 2nd when she ran her first competitive race in Europe. Hima won gold in the 200 meters race at the Poznan Athletic Grand Prix and Kutno Athletics meet in Poland earlier this month. She won her third 200 meters gold at Kladno Athletics meet and the fourth gold at the Tabor Athletics meet at the Czech Republic. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Sanjay Mattu. Thank you, Ravi. Most newspapers lead with a tribute to former Delhi Chief Minister Sheila Dixit, who passed away yesterday. The Indian Express headline describes her as CM who shaped New Delhi. Many papers also feature a photograph of PM Modi paying his tributes to Sheila Dixit, the longest serving woman chief minister on their front page. Another story that finds prominence in the papers is the capture of the British tanker with 18 Indians on board by Iran. The pioneer writes, India in talks with Iran for Indian cruise release. The Tribune quotes the defense minister Rajnath Singh as saying that the government was for talks but had many other means too to resolve the Kashmir issue. In related news, the Hindustan Times reports that there were fewer stone pelting cases in Kashmir under central rule. And finally, those who don't declare any taxable income but splurge money on buying cars, homes and jewelry will now have to contend with a new weapon of the income tax authorities. Aadhaar will now be used to track big ticket transactions, reports the Hindustan Times. And with that, it's back to you, Ravi. Thank you Sanjay in some more news Pakistan's anti-corruption body has initiated another investigation against jailed former prime minister Nawaz Sharif and his daughter Maryam for their alleged involvement in money laundering and having income beyond their means according to Dawn News the National Accountability Bureau NAB launched the investigation against Maryam her father Nawaz uncle Shahbaz Sharif cousins Hamza Shahbaz and Yusuf Abbas and others for owning the Chaudhry Sugar Mills Limited The NAB has reportedly traced numerous telegraphic transfers worth millions of rupees by the Sharif family and the end beneficiaries included Maryam and other owners of the Chaudhry Sugar Mills. The development came a day after an anti-corruption court dismissed a plea filed against Maryam who is also the vice president of the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz PMLN for submitting a fake document in the high profile Avon Field Apartments case. Nawaz Sharif is now serving a 7 year prison term at the Kot Lakhpat jail in Lahore since December 24 2018 in the Al Azizia case. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again. Last rites of veteran congress leader and former Delhi chief minister Sheila Dixit to be performed today with full state honors. 20000 wellness centers to be completed this year under the Aishman Bharat program. Efforts on for early release and repatriation of Indian nationals on board British oil tanker seized by Iranian authorities says MEA. And in sports, Hima Das wins gold in 400 meters race at Nove Mesto in Czech Republic, taking her gold tally to 5 this month. In badminton, PV Sindhu to meet Japan's Akane Yamaguchi in the women's singles final of Indonesia Open in Jakarta. With that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.